Something that you eat that people would think is disgusting. <laughs> Peanut butter pickle sandwiches? You do? You and yeah. Jason, like, oh my goodness. Yeah, what wait. was Jason? Peanut butter and cheese? I feel like there's certain things you, you know aren't, aren't good before you have to try them. <laughs> like, no one's like, hey, I eat my garbage, and you should try it before you judge. We do eat garbage plates in Rochester. That's a good point. <laughs> so our standard is just at the bottom as it is. Uh, the secret to happiness is low expectations. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you eat peanut butter and pickles? I just oh, like once a year. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> now it all makes sense. Our goal on this podcast is to know Jesus better and by the power of his spirit do better so together we can be a little better. Well, welcome to A Little Better. So glad to have you here this week for week number three, three out of six. So we are getting to the halfway point on Dear God, our series on prayer. And uh, I'm looking forward to discussing this one. But uh, why don't you catch people up with your sermon in 60? Yeah, we looked at uh, Jesus' example of prayer and what Jesus teaches us about prayer, that we have an example of prayer from him. And so we looked at the Lord's Prayer and we just kind of learned a a lot of practical things about prayer. Like it's not meant to impress. Um, Personal prayer is is more the priority in this passage than public prayer, even though public prayer is something that we need to do in our prayer life. And ultimately, Jesus takes us to a place where we see in our prayer life what God values, um, that the Lord's Prayer is not a script to just always pray, but it's a roadmap to our prayer life. And ultimately, I think Jesus teaches us that God desires to hear from us, that prayer is such a vital part of our walk with God. Yeah. And uh, I do want to welcome Matt Soans to the podcast. I am correct. This is your first time on the podcast. Second time. Oh, second time. First time on staff. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's right. What did you? What topic were you covering the first time? We I, did uh, Drew preach about abortion. Oh, and so I, I joined from Compass Care. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I was. I think that might have been. Was that with Daniel? You? I think it was I Drew, Daniel, and Matt. I wasn't. I wasn't there for that. I don't think. But I think you were. <laughs> <laughs> we, Taylor, we need to go back and let's, let, go let's to the look tape. at the record let's find and out. see. We will find out. <laughs> oh no, no! I think it was me and a nurse from Compass Care. You're right, yeah. Brad. You're okay. right. But yeah, you you sat in that chair. <laughs> hey guys, ladies and gentlemen, for once, Brad was right. Let's once. mark it down. No, my you bad. Know, even a yeah. stopped clock Kathy is Mara right twice here. a day. So. <laughs> That's right. But yeah. uh, Matt Soans is our. I got to keep up with the titles around here. So you're an executive director. Is that the correct? I am ministries lead. Ministries lead. Okay. You want to give us a brief definition of that? I am responsible for uh, helping all of our ministry leaders uh, do their job well. And, and and you do it very well. So glad to have you on the team. So <laughs> I'm also and, responsible for discipleship, basically. Yeah. yeah. And Matt is most weeks, I think, in our pre-preach. So also mm-hmm. part of the crowd that gives feedback, which I think leads me to another question, which is how helpful was the pre-preach feedback this week? <laughs> True. <laughs> I mean, it's always helpful, right? Like, I feel like pre-preach gives me confidence going into Sunday, Mm -hmm. Uh, just from, like, a perspective of how people take things in, right? I think there's a... a, What what always amazes me is how people can hear the same thing and hear it from different lenses. And so Mm -hmm. knowing the lenses of the audience and how they're going to perceive things. And, you know, we had an in-depth conversation about... Just, you know, in pre-preach, I, I, I didn't say this in my message, that God prefers shorter prayers than longer prayers. And that, that provoked caught, a discussion. That did provoke. And just so everybody knows, when I go to pre-preach, I usually bring my, you know, I bring everything out to see what what doesn't sit right and what does. And so mm-hmm. um, we got a, a good dialogue about this, mm-hmm. Jesus's words, like, do not babble like the pagans, because right. they think they're going to hear, but they're going to be heard from many words. And so we talked about like this whole idea of babbling and what is babbling and what is not babbling. Yeah, mm-hmm. I thought it was a really good discussion. I've I, There have been other discussions where people have really gone at it, just like for advocating for their view. I kind of felt like this discussion, we were all trying to figure out what it meant. You know, yeah. We were all mm-hmm. throwing out, is it this, is it that? I mean, there were so many things about it. You know, When you said Jesus likes shorter prayers, it was like, does he though? I mean, 
some people are going to be in a bad way if they signed up for 60 minutes of prayer, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I still, okay, this is me just being real on the podcast. I think I still stand by that statement. Okay. That Jesus podcast prefers, only. it seems that Jesus prefers shorter than longer. Now, let me, let me bring some clarification to what mm-hmm. I'm saying. I'm not saying long prayers are bad. I just think Jesus likes when we know what's going on in our heart and we just share it to him. Like just raw, real, here it is, Jesus. Now, I, I think Matt, yeah, you brought me, up this great point. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm a verbal processor. So sometimes it's hard for me to even know what's going on in my heart <laughs> yeah. unless mm-hmm. I can babble for a while. Yeah. Um, I, not babble in the sense that I don't know what I'm saying or the words are empty, but it just takes me a while of talking to get at what's really going yeah. on in my heart. I even had someone text me last week during the prayer season saying, when I started praying this week, I realized as I prayed what was in my heart that I didn't even know was there. Exactly. Yeah. That's my experience often. Yeah. I think unnecessarily long. I mean, Jesus is certainly against unnecessarily long prayers. But then we're just debating what is or isn't necessary, what is or isn't helpful. I thought it was Mm -hmm. interesting you told the story of your daughter and just for her that time just to have the oh, time yeah. talking with you. It's, that's what's important is the time she spends with you. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's our longest storyteller. Her, her stories would go on forever sometimes, I think, <laughs> if we didn't interrupt her. But she just, uh, once she has her attention, she wants to keep it. And mm. so she she's just stretches out the story so long so that she can get as much time and attention from mm. you as possible. So Yeah. So what would we th- consider like the clearly bad? I mean, the clearly bad, I think, is like, Bain repetition, I think, might be part of the definition of the word we see there. But, I mean, sometimes we think, what? We're, we're, we're incantations. We're trying to force God's hand. We're, if we do it long enough, he has to give us what we want, which then that makes me think about a parable, which seems to be that was exactly the point. You know, so... I think this is, you know, even in our conversation, what, what at some level can make the Bible difficult for people is you can read a passage here and it says this, but then Jesus is like, don't babble. But like, you should repeat your prayers. We see Jesus repeating his prayers. Mm-hmm. And that we, in, in this, in this uh, series, we read about Jesus praying the same thing over and over again in the Garden of Gethsemane, right. Lord, can you take this cup from me? Yeah, mm-hmm. And so I think we just have to understand the heart of God, right? The right. more we spend time with God, the more we get to know God and we realize what he wants. And I think when he's speaking about Babel, I think he's talking about a lot of different things, like right. just repeating things aimlessly. Like, hey, I'm just mm-hmm. gonna say this over and over again. There's no heart, there's no meaning behind it. I think there's times where we just say ritual things that don't, that mm-hmm. don't like they were just saying it because that's what we always say. Um, like, mm-hmm. you know, I think Michelle mentioned in, in pre preach, like, dear God, thank you for this day. And she said, you know, they say it every time, even thank when you it's for that nice day, when it's a tornado outside, <laughs> Lord, thank you for this nice day. Like, that can, I think, at some level feel like babble. I think the point mm-hmm. Jesus is really getting at is prayer is really pivotal and he wants not us just just to use words, but Mm -hmm. like to commune with him and talk with him. And we don't need to use a lot of words to get his attention. We have his attention. Mm -hmm. It it seems to me like when we, our words are disconnected from our heart, Mm. then that's that's where, because God's after our heart, right? He wants to connect with Mm us. And when our words become something that's not related to our heart, that's when we run into trouble with prayer. Mm. We're just saying empty things that don't really... Right. Yeah, I'm certain that praying for a loved one with cancer, you know, God's not saying, just pray for that once, don't ever repeat that (laughs) again, right? And I think that's hinted at in the Psalms, when there's the Psalms that say, how long, O Lord, Mm. before you deal with this injustice? I'm sure that's not the first time the psalmist prayed that. So there's, I love what you said, if it's connected to the heart. I mean, it's a continuing heartfelt uh, request. Let's talk a little bit about the Lord's Prayer, which was really the focus um, of this sermon. And really, at one end of the spectrum, the Lord's Prayer itself can be babbling. Yeah. Right? I mean, I've gone to um, Catholic funerals, and I'm not disparaging any any person's heart, you know, who's there. But, you know, there might be... You, you, especially as a non-Catholic, I'm stepping into this environment. And then comes the part where they say the Lord's Prayer, and then people are just kind of like listening to each other and helping each other remember if they're not Catholic. I think the Catholics have it well understood. But, you know, 
it, that can be babbling, right? You're just up there rotely following along with whatever's going. And there's a complete disconnection with the heart. So what is the opposite of babbling with the Lord's Prayer? How should the Lord's Prayer <laughs> be used? Well, I mean, I think you, you can use the Lord's play, Prayer in, in many ways in the sense of you can genuinely just repeat it to God mm-hmm. and it be a formed prayer. Um, and like I said, on Sunday, we're going to talk a, a lot about form prayers next week and how we can use the scriptures to help guide us in prayer, help pray those exact words. Because a lot of the Psalms and, and the scriptures, like that is Jesus's heartfelt prayer to God. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we can become so ritual, traditionalistic that we just repeat the same words but they have, like, like Matt said, they have no connection to what's actually going on in my life and what I want from God. And I think Jesus shows us this beautiful guide to prayer and mm-hmm. things that mm-hmm. truly matter to God in our prayer life. Things mm-hmm. like prayer can be a place of worship where I just declare mm-hmm. to God who he is and thank him for being that. It can be a place of um, struggle where I'm struggling with things and I need God's power to overcome it. It can be a place of daily provision. Like, Lord, my family needs food today, right? Or Lord, I need help with my job today. Like there's mm-hmm. so much richness in the Lord's prayer that could keep us praying on and on and on. Yeah. The, there is another tension there and I, I almost hesitate to bring this up, <laughs> but um, <laughs> well, you're do it anyway. <laughs> do it. I'm doing it anyway. Um, is that, you know, sometimes you know, with this idea that like our prayer should be connected to our heart. Uh, I get to a point if I've, I get to a point where, man, I don't feel like praying right now. Um, sometimes it's helpful to just use a formed prayer mm. to get me into a posture and mode of praying. So I'm letting my, my body and the, my actions lead mm. my heart. Um, you know, are, we're one being like we're I'm all connected. It's not like I've got emotions that are somehow totally distinct from my body or my mind. It's and so sometimes just saying the right words, the way they're written and the right words, right, mm-hmm. um, can get my, me into the posture of prayer so that I yeah. can actually engage my heart with God. Yeah, yeah, I um. I love, you, you, you use the words both guide and roadmap. Lord's, Lord's mm-hmm. Prayer is a guide. It's a roadmap. Um, Jason, when he was here a couple of weeks ago, shared Ken Boa's book, Face to Face, which takes scriptures you know, to guide prayer. But the whole structure of his book, he has like eight concerns in prayer. They're all from the Lord's Prayer. Mm-hmm. You know? So things like adoration and confession and petition and thanksgiving. Um, but uh, what I also like is it's not just, um, it, it not only tells us what we should pray for, but it also tells us what it's okay to pray for. Because mm. sometimes I wonder, is it really okay you know, to pray for this? And just to see in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day mm. our daily bread. Mm. That's not selfish. That's what God wants. He wants us to ask. All right, I'm going to throw out a question because you said something that made me ask a question. And I'm sorry, guys, I'm asking this. But is there anything that is not okay to pray for? I was think what I was thinking in my head was something like I want I want to be the richest man in the world. Okay, is that I, I can't think of a right way to pray for that. I I don't yeah know. like selfish desires, selfish desires, inordinate desires. Yeah, but um, is it wrong to pray like God says? You know, I want to know the desires of your heart, mm-hmm. right? Like so. Yeah, being the richest man in the world, but like, God, I desire to obtain wealth. Is that a wrong prayer? Isn't there a path of growth, spiritual growth, where, you know, our desires are very much at odds with the will of God, but as we grow, we do become more... You've talked about alignment, alignment with the will of God. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Jesus prayed something that wasn't in line Mm -hmm. with the will of God. Take this cup from me, but obviously he said you know, <clears throat> your will be done. So like he's yeah. aligning, yeah. but he's asking for something that is outside God's will, is outside of the will of God for the greater picture. Mm-hmm. Help us out, Matt. We're, we're, we're the only, here. the only, <laughs> what can my prayer <laughs> What's new, I, was in a, I was in a prayer group at uh, one time that had some rules about what you could pray for. The only negative rule was no prayers about sports. So, uh, 
that, that's an interesting question because I remember when I, 25 years ago, when I became a passionate Northwestern fan, I wrestled with the theological question was it okay to pray that the Wildcats would win? Do you pray that the Cowboys would win, Drew? No comment. <laughs> Obviously, God is not hearing my prayers, right? I mean, I, I do jokingly, you know, uh-huh. again, realistically, I'm not. Lord, I just desperately want the Cowboys to win. Like, I might be throwing the Hail Marys that I talked about. Like, come on, God, we need you right now. But, yes, I think if you, I think there are way more important things to God than which team wins a game or not. Right. You you know what I mean? Uh Uh-huh. And at some level, I think God wish we took our prayer as, our prayer life as seriously as we take those games. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh, Uh-huh. You you know. Yeah, indeed. So, um, other thoughts on on the Lord's Prayer and the agenda there? I think that's great. Um, I I, um, I I want to transition to um, what people are experiencing in our church because I love this. Is not just a lecture series. This is not just an academic exercise for people mm-hmm. you know reading a book. I mean, we are experiencing this together. Mm-hmm as a church. And you mentioned the fact that there were over 600 people who responded to our prayer challenge, you know, last week and just totaled up the how many minutes, hours, days, you know, of, mm-hmm. of, of, of prayer that was. But we've all been, I think we've all been in groups since the series started. What are we seeing happening in groups? How are, how are people, um, you know, reacting or experiencing this series? You want me to start? Go yeah. ahead. I mean, I have just, I've heard really cool stories of how prayer has affected people's lives, how Mm -hmm. it's changed their perspective. Um, I've heard stories of how close people feel with Mm -hmm. God through prayer. Um, Mm -hmm. I I think to sum it up, I think God is growing our church spiritually, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's that's half our aim, um, Mm -hmm. to become better disciples. And Mm -hmm. I just think it's really cool. Like, I, I... to, to even think of the power of, you know, 80,000 minutes of prayer or mm-hmm. 56 days, like yeah. mm-hmm. just to think the things that God is doing that we will never see the fruit of, yeah. that mm-hmm. we will never know. Um, mm-hmm. I prayed um, for every single individual that is part of the prayer challenge and like mm-hmm. to know like what what is that doing and how is God using mm-hmm. our prayers um, mm-hmm. I just, I just think there is so much power in prayer and like, you know what, can we say that we want to see tangible, the tangible evidence of that. But I think that's something that's so beautifully unknown about prayer is how our prayers work. Mm-hmm. And we don't always see that tangible evidence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so much, so often we focus on what are the what are the external impacts of our mm. prayer? Like, is God making the change in the world that I'm asking him to make? And and so often, the things that I'm praying for are actually changing me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's it's been cool for me, even in our group, to, to watch people wrestle in prayer and realize that spending time in prayer is actually changing them mm. and changing their outlook on their day. You know, I, I spend that time in the car in the morning on the way to work, Mm-hmm. Praying yeah. instead of listening to the radio, mm-hmm. and my whole day is different. <laughs> That's so cool. Right. Yeah, I'm hearing. I, um, Karen, and I are part of two groups. As a coach, I visit other groups. I just get to hear a lot of people respond. Um, some of them came from like a more liturgical background, a more form background, and for them, they're just finding incredible freedom. Mm. You know, in this, it's like, wow, I can just talk to God. And Drew, I love the way you closed your sermon with just how much you miss your dad. How wish you could pick up a cell phone and call your dad, but we can all. It's just a. It's just a phone call to your dad. I mean, that got to me like emotionally. And I also have been without my dad, you know, for mm. a long time. But you know. Those those are the desires God wants us to yeah. have, right? That yep. only mm-hmm. can be satisfied in Him. So I've seen people who come from much more liturgical backgrounds find freedom. I think I'm also finding people who have been a little haphazard and unstructured, you know, say, "Oh, that's so helpful." Oh, even just make the promise and make it with others. You know, I'm going to schedule this time for prayer, yeah. mm-hmm. or I'm going to. Jason sent out an email with the acts, you know, outlined, yep. you know, people. So there's form too, but freedom and form, but people, I'm just finding people very excited, very practical, yeah. you know, in changing mm-hmm. their behavior. You know, I think it's easy, too, to talk about how <clears throat> this is impacting our church. This has impacted me. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I signed up for the prayer challenge, and 
this whole week I have just felt this, this overwhelming nudge to pray in space. Mm. Right? I have, if you think about it, there's a lot of space in your life. Mm. And a lot of times you don't notice it, right? Mm-hmm. You're just, you're, you're going from space to something to space to something, whether it's your car ride, right? right? Or yeah. whether it's from meeting to meeting. And I've been so nudged like throughout my day to in the space, like talk to God, mm-hmm. right? From like, you know, I, my office building is often uh, where, where my office is, is, is a different building. And like, how often do I, aimlessly walk that walk Mm -hmm. without even ever thinking like, God, just give me an opportunity to pray. And like, I feel like in this series, God is teaching me there's no wasted time. And like to pray without ceasing means in those space moments, like Mm -hmm. God, thanks. If it's beautiful, thank man, this is a gorgeous day. God, thank you for making it right. Or Mm -hmm. like, God, I'm going into a hard meeting and I need your help. I, yeah. I, I want you to be present with me. Help me to be gracious. Help me to be kind. Whatever it is, like there's so much space in my life that God is teaching me to fill with him. I heard somebody say recently, like where does your mind go? Where, where's the resting place of your mind, mm. right? Hmm. In, in between things, you click hit send on the email and before you figure out what you're doing next, where does your mind go? Mm. And is it on to my Jesus? phone, but not to call my right. dad. <laughs> exactly. Right. And so often that's it. Like we're standing in line at the grocery store with our phone out because mm-hmm. yep. we can't stand like, uh, you know, 30 seconds of space. Yep. Mm-hmm. And if, uh, and that's another powerful thing that you said in your message today, like Jesus went away to be alone. Mm. And man, mm-hmm. is that harder than ever in our mm-hmm. culture today to yes. get space, not, not only just to take the 30 seconds between the things that we're thinking about, but Mm -hmm. also to be intentional about getting away from all the distractions Mm. to turn off the phone and the computer and the TV and, you know, actually spend dedicated time with Jesus. I think that's a super cool practical step that I didn't even talk about of like getting rid of, like like getting rid of the distractions. And I think it's easy to blame our culture. There's so many things. I'm the guilty one. Mm-hmm. Right. I like anytime I have free time, what do I am doing? I'm aimlessly scrolling on right. my phone or mm-hmm. looking at nonsense when it's like mm-hmm. you said, when my when my mind rests, let it rest in the presence of God. Yeah. Let, let it rest with being with my dad, right? And just mm-hmm. talking mm-hmm. with him. I think that's getting away from the noise. Yeah. Well, listen, I've been loving the series. I'm loving the impact it's having. I, it's it's not just words, it's transformation. Mm. So I'm just, and it's something we were experiencing, you know, together. Um, and certainly the lesson is don't wait to pray until you get your questions figured out. We've got plenty of questions we still haven't figured out. Yeah. But dive in and do it, and people are just, it's, it's, it's transforming me to mm-hmm. just that unhurried time. It's, it's great. So... Last week we did the prayer challenge. Doesn't mean you can't keep praying. And we're going to give you plenty more ways to apply what we're learning. Got three more weeks to go. Thanks for joining us. Please keep coming back.